we are continuing our investigation of why it is important to analyze the M plus peak or the molecular ion peak and what information can be gleaned from this analysis. This next part concerns the nitrogen rule. Nitrogen in organic compounds will be making three covalent bonds. Therefore, this will affect the nominal mass of the molecular ion. As it turns out, if there are an odd number of nitrogen atoms, such as a single nitrogen atom in an organic compound, the molecular ion will have an odd m over z value, or an odd nominal mass in atomic mass units. If there are zero or even number of nitrogen atoms, then the molecular ion will have an even m over z value. It is important to keep the nitrogen rule in mind when you're analyzing a mass spectrum. If you see an odd nominal mass for the molecular ion, this is a strong indication that there is a nitrogen atom in your molecule. If you see an even number, you can pretty much conclude that there are no nitrogen atoms. Unless, of course, there are two or four or six. I ask you to take a look at the key question number three, where you're asked to see how the nitrogen rule would apply to these three different molecules. Let's take a look at this. One of the things that I'd like to remind you is there is a shortcut in terms of determining the molecular formula. And it would be helpful to have the molecular formula for these three different compounds. So I'll remind you that in a typical alkane, the molecular formula will have the format CnH2n plus 2. So as an example, down here we have C5, there are five carbons, and then to determine the number of hydrogens, it'll be 2 times 5 plus 2, so this will be H12. You don't need to count all the hydrogens in the bond line drawing. As it turns out, if we have an alkane with a single amine functional group, so plus one amine, then the standard formula would be Cn H 2n plus 3. So we have four carbons in this case, so C4, and then 2 times 4 plus 3, so that is H11. And then of course one of the things that we're missing in the standard formula is there would be the nitrogen. So down here there'll be nitrogen. So that's the molecular formula for that compound. Now while we could come up with a formula for having two nitrogens, it doesn't happen that often. And so therefore, let's just count the total number of carbons and hydrogens and nitrogens. So I see that there are three carbons. I can deduce that there are two hydrogens on each of these carbons. And of course, there are two hydrogens on each of the nitrogens. So that's a total of 10 hydrogens. Therefore, this would be H10. This is C3. And then N2. With this information, we can easily calculate the nominal mass. And so starting with C5, I've got 5 times 12, so that'll be 60, plus 12 times 1, so that'll be 72 atomic mass units. Coming to the next example, 4 times 12, so that'll be 48. 1 times 11, so that'll be 11. And then, of course, 1 times 14. So again, we're just calculating the nominal masses. This gives me a value of 73 atomic mass units. And then finally, 3 times 12 will be 36, plus 10, plus 28. And this gives a value of 74 atomic mass units. You can see that for at least these examples, the nitrogen rule applies. In the next part of the activity, we're going to look at the significance of the m plus 1 peak. Before I get there, I wanted to return to this teaching model number 1 to show you that there's a feature here that we did not address yet. I think it's now time to take a look at it, and that is you might have noticed that there's a very small peak right here. So recall that the molecular ion is based on having carbon-12 isotope. The nominal mass, carbon-12, of course, is 12. What would give rise to a mass of 17 
would be if we have the carbon-13 isotope present. As it turns out, in every sample, there should be a carbon-13 peak because carbon-13 makes up 1.1% of all the carbon isotopes. So this would be called the M plus 1 peak. Now in this example, it looks very tiny and insignificant. But as it turns out, you'll see that the M plus 1 peak can give us some important information. So carrying forward in the activity, we now look at the teaching model number 3. And this is analyzing the M plus 1 peak. So I use the examples of the mass spectrums from decane and icosane. Now to give you a little bit of a hint, decane has 10 carbons, whereas icosane has 20 carbons. I ask you to pause the video and take a look at the key questions 4 through 6. The key questions 4 through 6 ask you to write the molecular formula for decane and icosane. You have a tool that would help you easily do this, so if I just remind you that alkanes have the typical format of Cn, H2n plus 2, so therefore the molecular formula for decane would be C10H22. Whereas the formula that we would expect for icosane would be C20H and then 2n plus 2 here would be 40 and then plus 2, so 42. You're then pointed to the fact that we have here the molecular ion peak, which you are to label, and we have the M plus 1 peak, which you are to label. And that's true for both of these mass spectrum. Now, of course, there'd be more to the mass spectrum in each of these cases. That is some fragmentation patterns. But we're just focusing on the region that corresponds to the molecular ion and then the M plus 1 ion. You're also told that the M plus 1 peak is about 11% of the molecular ion peak, which is the biggest peak in this portion of the spectrum, so we can set that at 100%. And you're asked to speculate that given that the molecular ion in this case we'd set at 100%, well, what would be the M plus 1 peak in icosane? And just by visual inspection, perhaps you get a sense that it's twice as big. So we'd expect that it would be around 22%. So perhaps you start to get an idea that the more carbons that you have in your molecule, the larger will be the M plus 1 peak. And in fact, there's a calculation that we can do to determine the number of carbons in our molecule. This would be highly powerful in determining the molecular formula based simply on this information. So the equation goes something like this. The number of carbons in a molecule equals the percent of the M plus 1 peak divided by the abundance of the C13 isotope, the naturally occurring abundance. So while this calculation will look a little bit circular at this stage, it's showing you the principle. So the number of carbons would equal 22 percent divided by 1.1 percent, and this is equivalent to 20 carbons. I'd like to give you a sense by using a graphic why it is that larger molecules will have a larger M plus 1 peak. So here's a diagram that's not found in your course pack. It represents our C5H12, which is pentane, and then C10H22, which is decane. I've written out a number of repeats for the pentane and the decane. I'd like to point out that in each one of the structures, each one of the molecules, there's a chance that there's a C13 isotope that's present. In any one of these structures, it's likely, however, that there's only going to be one C13. So for pentane, it's possible that the C13 would show up on a terminal carbon. It's also possible that the C13 would show up on the second carbon, or on the third carbon, or on the fourth carbon, 
and finally on the fifth carbon. So there's this sort of possibility for finding the C13. Again, because C13 is relatively uncommon, it's likely to show up only once in any one particular molecule. As you might imagine, if you have decane, well then there's a chance that it shows up on the first carbon, on the second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon, sixth carbon, seventh carbon, eighth carbon, ninth carbon, and of course the tenth carbon. There's a greater chance, because simply the structure is larger, for a molecule to contain a C13 isotope atom. And therefore, we would expect that for larger molecules, there will be a higher m plus 1 peak in the mass spectrum. And as you saw, we can use this information to determine the number of carbons. In the key question number 7, we're going to see how we can use not only this information to determine the number of carbons, but also deduce the molecular formula. In key question number 7, we have a typical spectrum. Let's label some features. One of the things that you'll notice is that we have a base peak right here. Of course, the base peak corresponds to the most abundant peak, and in this case, of course, it's not the molecular ion peak. The molecular ion peak is found at this position, right here. And, of course, we have the M plus 1 ion right here. One of the things that we need to do before we get going with the actual determination of the molecular formula is we should figure out what is the nominal mass of our molecular ion. Remember, we're just aiming for a nominal mass, so I think it's pretty easy to predict that it's going to be 86 atomic mass units. Here are the steps in actually determining the molecular formula. So step one, you want to determine, well, what is the percent of our m plus 1 peak? Now this example is different than in the previous examples in that our molecular ion is not set at 100%. Obviously, it's not the base peak. So I want you to be clear that you're trying to determine what is the percentage of 1.2 of 20.9. And therefore, I'm going to add here that we're trying to determine the percent of M plus 1 relative to the M plus. So to do that, this would look like 1.2% divided by 20.9% times 100% because we still want to end up with a percentage and this would be equivalent to 5.7%. The next step is like we did previously, determine the number of carbons. And so this will look like 5.7% divided by 1.1% which is the C13 isotopic abundance. This comes to, and here we're going to be looking for an integer. And you may need to round up or round down a little bit because these numbers are only expressed to two significant figures. So this number comes to 5. We now start to work on the molecular formula. So I have C5 something or another. And one of the things to keep in mind is that the total mass is going to have to add up to 86 atomic mass units. So the nominal mass for 5 carbons is equal to 60 atomic mass units. A little earlier, we reminded ourselves what is the generic formula for an alkane. So that's CnH2n plus 2. So if I have only 5 carbons and then the rest of the mass is made up of hydrogens, well the maximum number of hydrogens that I can have is H12. Of course, the total mass here is only 72 atomic mass units. This tells me that I must have another atom present in the molecular formula. Now here's where the nitrogen rule is going to come into play. Notice that this is an even number. So it's possible I have two nitrogens, although it's not actually possible because I don't have enough mass to have two nitrogens. Therefore, we can conclude that there are no nitrogens in this compound. The other more common atom that would be present in such a compound would be oxygen. 
So I suspect that, yes, indeed, I'm going to have hydrogen and I'm going to have oxygen. And the nominal mass for oxygen is 16 atomic mass units. I think it becomes pretty clear, therefore, that hydrogen will make up the rest of the mass, and therefore it will correspond to 10 hydrogens. So my molecular formula is going to be C5H10O. In first year chemistry, we determined the molecular formula often by using a combustion analysis. You might agree with me that in fact this sort of analysis is even easier to quickly come up with the molecular formula for a compound.